Hello, welcome back. In the last video, we talked uh, why do we need testing, and with a seven billion dollar uh, worth of uh, dollar in stake, then I I hope I convinced you why do you need to do testing. Okay. So in this video, I'm going to explain more about what kind of testing you need to know. So basically, before going to learn about what is the different kinds of testing, let's just do a quick review of the software development lifecycle. Say, for example, in this simple case, what we are doing here is we are creating a uh, online uh, retail store for this uh, for this user. Okay. So basically, you know, on, on basically what we're going to do, we are going to talk with this user to know exactly what are what are his uh, requirements? Say, for example, what is his shipping methods? Okay, so what kind of categories he's going to have? So, like, you know, and then how does the front page is going to look like? Or what is, you know, how to implement a recommendation system? That means if a user is is buying this CD, then the system should recommend or not? So these are essentially kind of things that uh, we basically we talk with these guys and then this is what we come up with a, a, a plan for the requirement and we document all those things and that is what we called requirement analysis or we call it requirement spec okay so once this requirement spec is done then uh, what you need to do we need to come and then uh, write those things uh, in a document and uh, in that in that case we are going to more like this requirement is more kind of ad hoc basis whereas the the next step what what we learn from the customer's requirement we might come up with different kinds of modules like for example the customer wants to have a login module so let's say this is the login and the customer have different kinds of payment mod method okay so that's the payment module okay so this is the payment and then the system, the customer wants a online shipping module to done so that is a so basically we can, what we can have we can have one more thing called the online on, on the shipping module okay so similarly different different kinds of module will come and essentially what this requirement we translate those things to a uh, document called functional specification document okay so remember this requirement spec is kind of more of ad hoc of the interview replies and all these things okay but uh, or this is what the customer tell and from whatever the customer you know customer sometimes will not tell a lot of things that what he requires but what this functional spec is going to contain a superset of everything that the requirement that he that he talks the software develop developers we might add something what is uh, what is not given in the customer's requirement but it is required to build the product okay and then uh, like after this functional specs uh, in place then we come up with some design decision like you know what is the architecture of uh, of the system okay what kind of software what kind of hardware we are going to use for example what kind of database we are going to use to store the persistent data are you going to use any caching mechanism or not so those kind of things comes in the design spec and also whatever the module that we, we discuss in the functional spec that's going to be detailed out here in the design spec we need to know how this login module is going to talk with the payment module okay or like you know so basically like in, in the design spec we come up the apis we come up with the interfaces between uh, different modules okay and that is what is we call design spec okay so by the end of the design spec almost all the components needs to be built are planned out like you know, how to do who is going to do and all those things and then basically we go and then write code and that is called build process this is what I described here is a traditional or typical software development life cycle. It is pretty much from the top to bottom, like it starts with the customer and ends with the developer. Okay, but here we didn't mention about anything about testing. But actually, we do testing in every stage of this waterfall model. Okay, so. So essentially, when basically you know we are building these blocks, we are building. You know, this basically developer D1 is trying to do login. Another developer said D2 is trying to do the the payment module. Another de developer three is making the shipping module. So what while they are building that individual the individual code, what they can do they can test if the login is working or not. To check if login is working or not, like you know he can just basically the developer who is building the the login module will have some kind of kind of a form like this. Like you know you give an email address, password, then he can come up with different test cases, different scenarios to test this thing. Like for example, give an empty email ID and empty password and see if the if you are able to sign in or not. Or then you give a valid email ID and a valid password. In that case, it should able to 
successfully log log you in. Okay, so remember, like you know, here what we are seeing a clean, complete system, but that time we just test with only the login page. Okay, so that is what we call unit testing. Okay, so this is what we call is unit. So unit testing is done by the individual developer, and the, the scope here is just only that application or that module or that block. Okay, so this is what the corresponding while we are building, we do unit testing, and once you know this my unit test like for example I am developing this login module and I am successfully completed all my unit test cases then I would say to my fellow developer that okay this login module is ready right now then if you have the payment module and if they are interfaced together then see like you know if both of these things working fine or not and that is what we call integration testing okay so in integration testing what we do we we combined couple of modules you know which is half baked or half cooked and then try to test if those things are working fine or not. So essentially what we are trying to do, like you know, if I am not successful in my unit test case, so instead of going to integrate some test, I will try to fix my code, okay, in the in, in the my in, in my login pay, login code. So that my login code login code individually should be working fine. So basically by using this kind of mechanism, by testing at you know, at the co at the code level or at the build level, we ensure that the that the thing that we are giving to the op is at least stable, at least a little bit of bug free. In the unit test cases you find an issue, then you file you raise a defect and you fix the defect. Once this defect defect is fixed, then once it passes all the unit test cases that whatever you have, then you proceed to the integration testing and in integration testing once you are done we are complete all these modules remember like integration testing may not be all the modules are tested properly so that is where the next kind of test step is coming which is called system testing okay so in system test i x i uh, like you know we are expecting that all the modules which was laid out during the design specs are all done are all tested unit testing and some sort of integration testing has been done and now we are going to run the system complete end to end okay so while running the comp system complete end to end you might come up with different issues and all those things you fix those defects and then once you are satisfied with the system test then you can release that product to the customer and then customer is going to test your acceptance test is passing or not so that is called user Okay, so the user acceptance test done at the customer side. The customer used to see like you know if whatever specific, whatever he has given in this requirement spec, if the product that whatever he got is is up to the requirement spec. Okay, so essentially what I showed you in in the left hand side software development life cycle, and in this left side what we show you is called software testing life cycle. Okay, so if we see like you know the software development life cycle is a top to bottom approach. Whereas the software testing life cycle is the bottom to top approach. So that means like you know, this, you know, it start from the customer, this goes all the way to the developer, and the testing start from the developer, it goes all the way to the customer or end user. So essentially what you are seeing, you are seeing a V. Okay. So this is basically called V model of development. Okay. And where the development and testing run side by side, and you know, testing brings out defect and feed it back to the development so that we can fix those things and then we can move up the channel and once we are done the system test we give it to the user accept user to for the acceptance test once this thing is over then we are done i hope this diagram gives you a fairly good amount of what kind of testing that we need to do at what time thank you